can you tell us about the Battle of the DJs real quick? Yeah, man, this is a uh, Battle of the DJs. This is uh, to promote HIV awareness. We're doing it right here in Sunny South. Hopefully. We're doing it right here in Sunny South because this is one of the highest rates. Race, this is the highest area in the city for HIV. So, what we doing, me, Mr. Quickness, G Smike Sound, Tight Out Productions, we out here to help promote HIV awareness, get everybody tested. We're gonna have a battle of the DJs out here in the process. We got barbecue, we got pit master over here working. So, we just gonna have a good time from noon until four. So, if you're watching, you got time to get out here. So how did it get started? Well, I just, we just got on board this year and uh, we have a sponsor. Where is the, the, the sponsor here? Is that We're gonna get the sponsor to come on to the show a little bit later and she'll further explain it to you. We just doing entertainment. So. Hey, I'm looking forward to that. I mean, y'all just get in here. No, I don't think that's for me. Come but on, we get man. in it. Like, you get Miss in it. Beach. Yeah. Hey, I like you. I heard your boy Savion GQ going to school in y'all in a minute. Oh, yeah. Savion should rap, bro. Savion got rap. Savion got rap. All right, man. So I got to get back to my post. All right. All right, man. All right. All right, so right now, we about to bring up a man who was on the show before. And you want, you want to know something I heard? What? I heard his birthday's on Monday. Wow. How old is he supposed to be, like, 48? 48, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Fucking old. He looks kind of young, but looks to be deceiving. So, let's go ahead and break up our man, Betrayal Vaughn. Come on. Alright, so, how's he looking for us? 24? 24. Wow. Mike, Mike, Mike. I will be 24. Oh, I'm not 48. Alright. So, how you life been ever since you first got on the show? Um, it's been a, a pretty good year. Uh, still trying to get overseas and play basketball. I uh, started training kids and uh, working part-time at a little sports store, so everything's been working out pretty good so far. Yeah, you trying to uh, go overseas, so how often do you practice each day? Uh, I go to the gym four times a week, two uh, two training, and uh, they work me out two times a week, two times a day. So if you go overseas, there's plenty of leagues. Which league will you play for? Right now, I'm just trying to get my foot in the door, you know. It don't matter where I play, as long as I play. That, that's all it is, man. It's just the option to play. Yeah, so, um, I mean, the NFL, all the signings. I mean, how you, what team do you feel like is going to do good? Uh, I really think the Cowboys going to do good if they end up getting Adrian Peterson. That's who I'm looking for them to sign, you know, because I know they got good at the Marco Mary. So, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the Cowboys seeing what they're going to do next year. What about you, Ike? Right now, I'm still kind of sour about DeMarco Murray signing with the Eagles. How do you sign with the, of all teams, you sign with the Eagles? Yeah. I mean, really? That's payback. Payback for what? For letting them I mean, that's the Cowboys' fault. I mean, no, I think the Cowboys just been smart. For the last couple of years, Cowboys have been on just throw money wherever they thought so. so I think Cowboys got this. No, I think it was a good move. I think he should have too. I think we have a better chance of getting a better one. Defense? Uh, they defense was pretty good. It was all right. It wasn't that bad. It got better towards the end of the season. Tough to carry it over. No, the team that I really think is going to do something here is the Colts. I mean, with Andrew Luck still there, Frank Gore, Andre Johnson. I mean, this team is like, that's the Colts is not going there. I mean, they've been doing their homework on the people who in the offense. Nah, I still got my money on the Seahawks. But I think the Eagles are going to do good, but not as good as the Seahawks. Because the Seahawks, they got Jimmy Graham. And that trade was just crazy. They got they traded Max Unger and some picks, draft picks, late round draft picks for Jimmy Graham. So that, that trade was crazy on the Saints part. 
Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. Uh, I mean, Seahawks don't really care. They just need to get a tight end. They don't have to win the whole team. The whole team can get great. So, I, mean, I think the Seahawks is for a uh, Super Bowl this year. What do you think, Patrol? Man, I don't even want to talk about the Seahawks right now. To be honest, they're just a different type of ball team. They're really good on defense and offense. They both do. All right, let's talk about Russell Westbrook. Last night he had another triple double. The eighth one of the year. How you doing, know Russell? No, I be talking to you before the show, and it seems like you be spilling some stuff. I tell you. I mean, I talk to you. No, 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 because I tell you stats, and then as soon as the show come on, you say them. I mean, my phone tells you stats. No, I mean, no, I can't no, give you that. No, I tell you stuff. Like, I, I mean, tell I you. I give like, credit to Bleachers for a great job. I love y'all. No. <laughs> You should give credit to Isaac too. I, I know mean, you I mean, good job on whatever you do. But, I mean, Russell Westbrook has been doing great. Kevin Durant, hurt. I mean, Russell Westbrook, he's holding it down for OKC. Uh, okay, so, I mean, if Oklahoma gets Durant healthy, I mean, I believe that OKC can do good without Durant, but I feel like Durant will still be a great asset to the team. I mean, this, he's Kevin Durant. This is obviously. Westbrook's team now. I mean, ever since Kevin Durant got injured, Westbrook has been playing like an MVP. So, I think Durant will leave is getting less attached because he's so used to OKC being his team. Because back then, when you first heard OKC, you thought Kevin Durant. Now when you hear OKC, you think Russell Westbrook. So, this is obviously Westbrook's team, but they still need each other. Yeah, I mean, Kevin Durant, He's a great player, and I mean, they've been saying that uh, the GM is thinking about trading Durant, but there's been sources not gonna saying, happen. Yeah, there's been sources saying that's not I gonna happen. Don't. He's Kevin Durant. I don't know, because you know he's from Washington, so I feel like he wouldn't mind going back to the Wizards, you know. That's crazy. Who, who, who are you gonna trade Kevin Durant for? They don't need a point guard, so don't say John Wall. Uh, I, mm, they would probably like give up a first round draft pick or something like that. I don't think he's gonna go back to Washington because Washington. They're pretty good. They are. Yeah, they're good, but they don't really don't have. They're gonna have cap space to sign him, but they still need to worry about their bench. So if they worry about their bench, and then they can worry about Kevin Durant. But this year's salary cap is going to go up to 160 million dollars. So which is the largest jump ever in NBA history. So I think OKC can re-sign Kevin Durant, and they do have his bird rights. Yeah, I mean, since salary cap is going up, that's going to help each team, especially the ones who's like compete with salary cap. But like you said, like if Durant do go to the Wizards, I mean that helps the Wizards a lot too. With Durant and Wall, I mean together, I mean that's great. That's like the other duo that LeBron is doing with Kyrie. LeBron wanted to play with a point guard. If Durant play with a point guard, I mean that'd be great. I mean a different. Right. Bro, Kyrie had 57, Kyrie Irving had 57 points. Yeah, LeBron committed him on that. Bro, he has scored the highest career total than LeBron James has ever. I mean, yeah, Kyrie Irving, I mean, I've been, I've been his fan for a while. I mean, I'm telling you, Kyrie is like the best scoring point guard. So, What you think about Kyrie? Did y'all see his stat line? Seven for seven from the three point line. Eight for eight from the uh, free throw line. Like, he don't, he's, he's one of the best point guards in the league right now. One of the best, but not the best. Who do you think the best is? What's the best? Okay, Dennis I, Kyrie Irving. It's I, uh, a tight match. I, I can't say nothing about that. I don't agree with you. I don't. I mean, oh, why not? Why not? Because Kyrie is a better player. He gets no, everybody not. involved too. No, not. He's Kyrie Irving will not be able to lead his team as good as Russell Westbrook has. Will be, or can be, as we've seen in the past. Okay, so, who you think gonna make it to the finals? Okay, see, or the Cavs? I don't think neither of them gonna make it to the finals. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Right. I mean, honestly, I think both of them Because OKC, OKC I, I think they can beat the whole West. I really think OKC has a chance to make it from the West. And I think the Cavs, I mean, the way they're playing now, I think they have a chance to make it to the East now. No. Because they will make it to the playoffs. No. The second half of the season, they've been doing great. So 
actually the Pacers are an NBA vets. 10 and 1 ever since the All Star break. I didn't, I didn't say that uh, Cavs were the best. I said they have been doing great ever since the second half of the season. They're so, I mean, they. I can see them making it to the conference finals, but the NBA finals, no. Okay, you don't see that happen? I mean, no, and I don't. LeBron no. James. He's a different player in the playoffs. So, what he's doing now is not what he would be doing in the playoffs. He's going to be doing better than that. Like he got something to say. Let's go. So how many times have LeBron been to the finals these last four years? How many times? Three. But you also have to look. You also have to look at this. The Cavs don't have a good bench. The only people that really have is Iman Shum. Who else? They have J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith. That's it. But we all know Kevin Love isn't producing like they were expecting him to. We just got to make the trade they did for Andrew Wiggins. Not that smart. All right, but in basketball, there's no season. You got the beginning, you got the middle, and you got the end. When it comes to the playoff, everybody, everything changes. So Kevin Love, Kevin Love is a, a big time player, so he's gonna step up in that position to fill that role. He's done it before. He's a, he's a big time player. So in this time, this crunch time, I feel like Kevin Love gonna show up right on time. Yeah, I, I agree with Patrell on that. No. Because Harlow, let's talk about other players. Kevin Love doesn't get enough touches to see if Phil be able to show up or step up in crunch time. I believe he can, but on a team where he can get enough touches. All right, all right, let's talk about Kyrie, too. I mean, Kyrie Irving, he hasn't had the chance to go into the finals because he's been with the Cavs. But in the previous years, he's been doing great, like, in, in college with Duke. He only he, played one game. I know, in, in college, no, I'm talking about in college and Duke when they were going to the finals. I mean, Kyrie stepped up in the clutch. So, I mean, you have people who can play in the clutch in the finals. So, I mean, Kyrie, LeBron, and I think Kevin Love will, too, because he, they all want that ring, Kyrie and Kevin Love. So... I mean, I'm not with you on that. Cavs will make it to the finals. No, I have the Hawks or the Raptors making it to the finals because the Raptors, are, the Raptors, they I ain't gonna lie, they haven't been doing good. But you still have Kyle Lowry, Demar, Ro, Demar Derozan, and other bench players that can pick up the slack. Say Kyle Lowry doesn't have has an off game, which he has, but you think about it, they still been winning those games. What? But if LeBron or Kyrie have an off game, they're still losing. I mean, they're still losing games, but I think, I mean, overall, they're winning more games than they were losing, like, even when they have off games. So, I don't agree. No, they're not. But, okay, we have to go to a commercial. So, Savion's going to be up with this. a decade of his life helping the community and other people. So what he's doing is very, very tremendous. I gotta give out a shout out to my main man, Brian Cook. How you doing, Mr. Cook? Hey, thank you, man. Thank you, thank you. Hey, I appreciate that introduction. I've been introduced like that in my life, man. I appreciate that. Hey, let's give it up for the introduction, everybody. <laughs> Appreciate that. Nah, man, that was nice. I do that all the time. <laughs> Thanks so, for being modest, man. <laughs> so tell us, what has inspired you to want to work with the youth from ages of 7 to 15? Well, I grew up playing football and basketball, running track, doing every sport that I can do, uh, whatever season it was in. So basically, um, I actually had an injury football that caused me to uh, lose the game of football. So I didn't lose love. I lost the game, but I didn't lose love. So what I what I did was actually use that as motivation to help others to get where they need to go. So uh, tell me, like, what kind of training do you give to kids who try to get into college? Well, my college kids, they usually, uh, I do cone drills, I do 40, we do, we do ladder drills. We do everything that needs to be done in order for our kids to 
to prosper to the next level. So, what injury did you get hurt from? Well, I had a microscopic scar tissue on the brain from a, a hit that I actually gave. And, uh, Wait, can you dumb that down a little bit? Well, <laughs> somebody doesn't get it. <laughs> I can dumb it down just a little bit. Uh, back in those days, they didn't really talk about concussion. And, and with this concussion, I ended up having a, a situation where the scar tissue on my brain was causing me to black out. So when I blacked out, I didn't know what was going on. The, the ambulance came. I didn't actually know that this was going on until maybe two weeks after it happened. So uh, once it once I went to the doctor, I actually had to go to the hospital and spend two weeks there. Um, and I was told I wasn't able to play football in long. Wait, so when you blacked out, if you did you notice? Did you know? I had no idea. So you thought you were like asleep or something? I did. I was ready to battle everybody who was standing over me when I woke up. I had no idea what was going on. It's like sleepwalking. Wow. So I mean, since you weren't able to play anymore, you, you gave your talent to the kids. So tell me, like, so, tell us some of your success and some of your like successes, uh, like what what thing went to go be? Right now I have a, a group of kids that's actually going to college, my 2015 class uh, from my Lake Highlands Wildcats group. Um, I have Charles West who's actually signed with BYU. I have uh, Germany Smith who's actually going to Iowa University. And um, several other kids that are actually taking junior college opportunities and, and uh, that are still looking for opportunities to uh, to advance on their high school. Career. So, what advice can you give young youth and adults that have peer pressure on themselves? As far as peer pressure is concerned, we have to learn to be leaders instead of being followers. Uh, when, when it comes down to someone asking you to do things that you don't need to be doing, then you have to ask yourself first, what, what's the cost of, of me doing this? Is this going to penalize me for my future? Am I going to be able to prosper and be who I want to be in life? And, and then you have to kind of exercise good judgment when it comes down to getting into vehicles with people, uh, going to different places, clubs, parties. You have to make an executive decision on your own life. So. What I, what I tell kids about Twitter as well, when you're on Twitter, you have to make sure that you're on social media, that you're not actually doing things that are going to harm your career. There are different things that you can say that can harm your career. So I want I want my guys to be uh, cognizant of that, that particular situation. So out of everybody out there watching and who wants to like, get in contact with you, can you tell them how you can be reached? I can actually be reached at businessisbiz at gmail.com. And I also am a part of the Mesquite Pee Wee Football Association at this time with the Mesquite Gators. So I can be reached online or I can be reached uh, through my email and I can also uh, offer a phone number at a later time. Can you tell them your email and the website? Okay. The email is B-I-Z-N-E-S-S-I-S-B-I-Z -S 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 at gmail.com. And the, the, the Mesquite Pee Wee Football Association is mesquitepeewefootball.com. All right, so do you follow sports? I actually do. Okay, y'all follow sports, y'all follow sports. Um, y'all don't want to follow sports. I lead sports. Wow. Did he say he breeds sports? I he lead he lead sports. He needs. So you got to be number I one. Lead. He got. He had to have it, right? He got to have it. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's his ego talking. So I see that. That ain't ego. That's my brain. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> see what I have to do deal with every show. I see, man. I see. Hey, if he doesn't have confidence, he's gonna have it for him. You're right. You're right. You're definitely right. Why are you looking at me like that for, man? Why, why are you looking like you got a problem, man? I, I, I always got a problem with you, man. You always looking at me funny. Hey, Patrol, oh, man. <laughs> you, you look like you got a problem with me. Hey, Patrol. Like, you, like we need to settle something. Hey, I, I actually do. Wait, 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 wait. I saw you checking out my beard over there early. So, with all this confidence that you have and all of this sports that you, you're talking right now, what are you planning on playing when you grow up? I'm not playing sports. You just know sports? Yes. It's a tough difference. I'm not trying to get hurt or anything. <laughs> oh, so you're tough. And soft at the same time. <laughs> no, I'm oh. tough, but cautious. It's a total difference. Uh, it sounds soft to me. No. Stop. You're the host of the show and I have a question to you right now. <laughs> oh, hold up, hold up. Let's, let's go back to the, the LeBron situation. Yes, let's leave. He went to the finals. 
four times in a row, not three. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So what does that mean? What makes you think you're going to get there this time? Because in a row, by the way, his team. It, it's a, honestly the Easter Conference is stronger than it was last year. And say they're not. But this is LeBron James. He got there by himself. No, he didn't. What? He got what? Back to the Cavs. He, he's done it before. He, he can he can put his whole team on his back and, and take him to the finals. Yeah, I don't think so. In the Cavs, yeah, better than what they were a long time ago. Because I think this is what I think it is. You have LeBron. Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh were willing to take a backseat role for LeBron James. But here's the total thing with Kyrie. He's young, and he wants that NBA Finals MVP. So, And you can tell, by the way, when they were playing the Spurs, and it was down to crunch time, LeBron didn't have the ball in his hands. I'm not, I'm not saying both he's not clutch or anything, both of them but the ball. Who, who hit the shots? Who hit the shots? Kyrie did. 57 LeBron points. He hit... Kyrie hit a three. If you go Brian only went over 30 points. <laughs> he only had 31 points. They combined 88 points together. So, <laughs> so I, I know think, a little bit about I think, I think if anybody's going to lead the Cavaliers to the finals, if they make it there, it's going to be Kyrie. It's going to be both of them. I mean, like, when you had the Heat, Dwayne Wade didn't always, like, try to lead as much as LeBron did. Like, as the uh, years went by, Dwayne Wade started taking that back. He let LeBron be the leader, and Dwayne Wade came in and produced when LeBron wasn't. But Kyrie, he's producing when LeBron is, which is helping the Cavs a lot. No. I mean, they're both producing. You can't stop both of them. If they try to double LeBron, he can pass it. If they try to double Kyrie, he's passing it to LeBron. There's always somebody open. No. So that's what no, you're not no, realizing. No. You, I, re always, I realize that. I'm saying... What I'm saying is, Kyrie, Dwayne Wade was younger. I mean, older. He's older than Kyrie. So, Dwayne Wade's already, already got a ring. So, he still wants more. But LeBron was willing to say, all right, I'm, this is my team right now. My team, I brought all y'all guys in. I brought y'all this ring. But when he comes to the Cavaliers, Kyrie's still young. He wants to lead the team. He's always wanted to do that. So, what I think it is, Who's going to lead the team when it comes to the last shot that needs to be taken? Who's going to take the I shot? I can answer that. It's going to have to be LeBron because LeBron is Cleveland. That's just the end of the line. Take, think about this. Le no. Kyrie's going to, I think Kyrie's going to take the shot. Think about this. Remove LeBron from the team. They going to the championship? No. Okay. Move. <laughs> remove Kyrie. Remove Kyrie from the team. They're going to the no, no, that's it. No, that's it. simple. No. Remove Kyrie from the team. They're going to the championship? They have before. When LeBron oh, was with the Cavs, Kyrie wasn't there. They went to the championship. The oh, East man. was... The East... The East is... Oh. No disrespect. There's still a weak conference. You have... If some of the teams that don't make the playoff for the rest, West, you look at the East records, they could be eight, seven, and six seeds. Like New Orleans and Phoenix, if they played in the if they played in the East, they will make the playoffs. So I think the East is a weaker conference. No, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. You can. Ask. So it's easier for LeBron to get to the conference final. But when it comes to the conference final, they're gonna have to face teams like Chicago. Right, the Hulk. Chicago's not going to be there. Hey, all right, I, I, I mean, you're just going on, so, I mean, we have to wrap this up. We're about to go into a moment in history, so DJ D, take us out. Hey, appreciate you guys. Yeah. I'm going with my cup. Let's go. We gon' ride. We gon' ride. Yeah. We gon' ride, ride. We gon' ride. We gon' ride tonight. We gon' ride. Zone 65 deep, taking up the whole street. Can't nobody sleep. Call the police. It's a lot of noise. Here they come doing wheelies. It's them biker boys doing stoppies, burning rubbers on the drag strip. Settle up, y'all. Time to take a trip from the Lone Star State to Cali, Apple Valley. Then we headed to the nearest rally. That's where all the tight bikes go. So we're praying for them. Put blessing stickers on their bike, though. Let them know that Jesus Christ is their life, yo. And without them in their heart, they just might go. To a place where suffering and pain grow Being chained like them slaves in Django So you better switch gears coming to the light And we can ride all night <laughs> Let's go We gon' ride, we gon' ride We gon' ride, ride We gon' ride, we gon' ride tonight We gon' ride, ride yeah. We gon' ride, we 
Dreams I could only imagine I'd have seen what I seen on the ride with my daddy Hardy on the Harley Holy Ghost party, Captain Kirk moving work It's the rise of the fallen transformation of the nation Confined to open spaces Back road flipping, iced tea cold sipping Pedal to the metal, all the thumb will make it run Creeping deep through day of sleep Cause I do it for the sun, going out with great sun Big homie ring the bell From the hood to the church, snatch the sinners out of hell Gas for the flight, in the city be the light Motor rail super live, so the city see the light Cool on the cruise and never stop I'm a doer, God gave me the strength to go hard Putting in work, pull the tag, check the cert On a mission for the risen, let's ride, yes sir We gon' ride, we gon' ride We gon' ride, ride we Yeah, thank y'all We gon' ride, we gon' ride Exalt, we gon' ride Y'all check it out on YouTube We gon' ride, we have 4,000 views right now, three we weeks We gon' ride, ride We gon' ride we gon' ride tonight, gon' ride, ride. Hey, thank y'all. Yeah. Hey, we got a problem. And, um... Uh, Apologize, Evan. Apologize. We've been for a while, actually. And I know my friend, my brother John, he knows a lot more about this topic than me. And, uh, he's dealing with the fraternities, right? So, I mean, you just be blunt with them, like, tell them exactly what happened and what exactly what the channel was. Hello, hello, before we start, I got something to say to Sevian. Sevian, you, you said the wrong thing. You were like, don't come on my show, unless you got something about you say. She said, don't come on your segment of the show. Yeah. Know your place, man. I can't let that saucy here, but let's go, John, what is it? So, anyway, the chant is from the SAE fraternity, and they say there will never be an end. Edward, I'm not gonna say it exactly. There'll never be an end, SAE. Hang the end, kill the end, there'll never be an end, SAE. Now, people look at this as a racist comment or a racist chat, but I, I understand it is a racist chat, but the fraternity was established in the 1800s, the first fraternity in the South, and that's when racism was a way of life, it was accepted. So it was okay for somebody to make something like that. But now you got kids today saying this chant, well, teens or adults, young adults, saying this chant in college. And then they say, you can't get mad at me because I had a learned the chance to go to You should know better than to repeat something like that on, and, and let somebody record it and then put it on uh, social media. As much as media has evolved, and you say something like that, they get mad when the fraternity is dropping when, when there's nothing left about the fraternity when it's trash now because something like that was made. I understand that's part of the fraternity, that's the origin of the fraternity, but you're not supposed to repeat that, knowing that the way, the, knowing that's the way of meeting. They had to learn it to get in. That's, yeah, that's a lot. What, yeah. what, what I think it is, they could say it, but honestly, I'm not offended by it. I'm a surprise. Yes. I mean, I've heard worse things said about me, so I mean, it's like, okay, it's a fraternity. They can make their own decisions. So, if they, you can't come back and apologize and say, I didn't mean to do it, if you had to learn the chance to get in. So, you really, I mean, people these days just surprise me. But say, well, check this out, though. These kids in college now, they at the age they know. To accept that and know what it means and know what's really going on and still do it, you talking about there's going to be future future doctors and lawyers and judges and all this stuff like that. You saying it's okay to do this? They, oh, I had to do it to get in the fraternity. No, nah, what your integrity is? What your morals? Your standards? You know what it means. So you, what's up? You have the opportunity to be either the solution or continue to be the problem. And these particular kids decided. To to be the problem. Uh, racism is a learned behavior. And, and what we need to do is, is make sure that everybody understands, even within our own community, we have a we have options. And that's to teach our kids the right way to do things. Uh, whether it be racist, whether it be uh, lying, whether it be stealing, we have the opportunity to teach our kids the right things. Those children were taught the wrong things at home and done an injustice at school because they continued that behavior. 
Yeah, but, yeah. Um, the, the people who said it, the people to get it, the individuals who said it to get inside of the fraternity, I mean, that's on them too because, like they said, they're old enough. But also, the individuals who started the fraternity, that's on them too because I believe it was started like in the 1800s. Yeah, 1800s. Yeah, so, I mean, that's when racism was really going on. So, I mean, I mean, they thought it was okay, but as soon as, I mean, as soon as some individuals should have been able to realize that this is not okay, and they could have took that out of the fraternity. But now, like, they just jeopardized the whole fraternity and just shut it down. So that's their fault. They had the chance to change what they did. I understand what you're saying, but the base of the fraternity was that common. This is when slavery was the way of life. This is when slavery was accepted. You live by slavery. This is when African Americans were not accepted in society. So you can't just take it out. That's a lot of work from start. You start on a base and then you just get rid of it, you demolish it. Now, you can't just do that, but listen to this round, listen to this round of discussion. It makes me think on, like you said, young lawyers, soon to be doctors and stuff. If they're okay with these type of comments, what if we have to run into them one, one day for as, as as they need as we need them for a job if they need a place in my life? That's, that's kind of scary. If they're racist towards African Americans, I'm not gonna necessarily call them racist if they're just repeating what they learned, what that they had to learn. But that's scary that you have to go to somebody that may be racist towards African American that's repeating the chant that have to work on. Let me correct you though. But he said that um, you can't take it out. They could have took it out, like as like as the years went by. Like we're not li we're not supposed to be living in a racist uh, society right now. Not supposed to. Okay, but they are. But I'm saying they could have took it out now because we're not supposed to. So they could have took it out. They could have took it out last year or the year before that. But they chose not to. That's their fault. That's their fault. They could have took it out, but they didn't. That's why I'm saying you're not supposed to steal, but people still steal it. Okay. We're not supposed to live in a racist society, look, but it's in this. Look, I, honestly, I was watching the news, and there's, there's an um, African-American woman, and they said she was a part of the church. So, what I'm thinking, she's a part of the church, and I'm offended, uh, this and that, this and that. But you joined the fraternity, you can't, you, right when you see the chance to get some money out of the church, you can't come up and start acting like you chose it. So when everything starts going mainstream, you can be like, oh, it hurt my feelings so much. No, you decided you wanted to be a So you decided that you wanted to be a part of this, and then you're going to say, well, I, I didn't know about it. If you didn't know about it, tell me why everybody on that bus had the chance to memorize the other chance. They have to record it. There, there's not you didn't know about it. There's that you don't want to be a part of that particular part of the fraternity because it looks bad. Well, I guess uh, they will be not be a part of it and want to be a part of it. If they're not be a part of that fraternity. I just feel. I mean, maybe it's that she knew about it and now it's grown. Now all of a sudden you want to change your side of the but if you did it for acceptance, you know what I'm saying? You stand in the front or sworn or whatever it is, you stand in there because you're trying to make it. I mean, what do you do? You know what I'm saying? You know this fraternity or the sorority is going to get you where you need to be in your future life. So God take that, you know, that's okay. You know what I'm saying? How do we, how, how she supposed to accept that? So that's what I believe it was just now. It's after, oh, now you now you going to say, no, what else? Well, yeah, I think of it. Uh, like what he said, but it's a mixture of both what uh, the dude, no, I don't really remember what's your name, huh? but it's a mixture of what Jermaine and Jamari said, they could have they slowly took it out, like slowly, take it bit by bit, they, they, they could have slowly changed the chant year by year. And at the same time, if people want to join and make it big in this world, because it's hard, it's a struggle out there, you know what I'm saying? So I can understand why she chose to get into the fraternity so she can help. See what I'm saying? But if that wasn't her goal, then I can understand that. But it's, it's kind of bad that that chant is in that, and they didn't change it so over time as the U.S. changed. You know what I'm saying? They kept it in there. So. 
it's, it's a mixture of good and bad, you know what I'm saying? Because it can help people, but at the same time, if, if somebody takes that chance to heart and they learn them ways, they become racist in a way. So it's, it's good and bad. It depends on the person itself. So I, I can understand that and I, I, and I can't. It, it's it's, it's kind of it's kind of wishy washy, you know what I'm saying? So, All right, wait. I'd like to bring up Miss Angela, who is here to talk about what we're doing today and everything that's happening. Hi, my name is Angela Crox and I'm the executive director for Homeway to Home Team Shelter. Each year we put on the benefit for the uh, HIV and AIDS awareness. There's a lot of people in our community that doesn't understand that we have the highest statistic of HIV and AIDS in the state of Texas. I'm a, also a flight attendant and as I was working, one of the co-workers told me that she tried to live in Dallas and she, didn't, she couldn't do it because there was too many men on the down low. And that kind of offended me. So I came back home and I did my research. I went to the Control Disease Center and found out that we have the highest statistic of MSM, which is men, sex, and men. Also HIV and AIDS are the young girls under 21 years old. And that kind of brought tears to my eyes. I said, I live in Dallas. I didn't know this information, so I had to come back and do something. So with my nonprofit organization, each year we put on the HIV AIDS World Hunt. This year we're doing the Battle of the DJs. We are, 30, we are at 3711, back of X, Cross Street, Metropolitan, from 12:30, from 12 to 4. We ask that you come on out with us and join us and join with us. We have HIV testing today. We have free food. We have bounce, bounce house. We have face painting. We have everything that the kids, young kids need, and we have things for the grown ups to do. And we have most important. We are giving away five hundred dollars for the best DJ in the Dallas, Texas area. So come out and support. All right, so we're about to wrap up the show. We would like to thank everyone that was a part of Miss Angela, the rappers, and Rachel. <laughs> so this is SDI 740. Oh, oh yeah, my bad, man. My bad. You know, you got to save the best for last. <laughs> yeah, no, hey, I'll let you get away with that. Good save. <laughs> All right, so this is SDI 740. We out. <laughs>